Welcome back to Nintendo Prime, everyone. We got three stories for you today that are, are kind of, well, one of them's a really good story, but two of them are just head scratching, baffling. We have Nintendo doing an update for the 3DS that breaks. <laughs> It, it makes it so it's much harder to hack your 3DS, and no one really understands why Nintendo's still updating the 3DS. We'll get into that. Sony goes out of its way during a business briefing that's public to release a graph that insults Nintendo with incorrect data. Very strange, given Nintendo's public data. Oh, and we're not done because, hey, new DLC was announced for Sparks of Hope. So let's get into all these stories after I remind you that we are on a road to 133,000 subscribers. We do have a giveaway going on right now down in the pinned comment in the description for like a Hylian Shield replica, some switches, some collector's editions of games. A really cool giveaway you guys should go enter. But also I am chasing my dream here. I'm turning 37 this year. I'm a father of three. I'm not supposed to be successful on YouTube at this age, but I am building towards that success. So if you want to go ahead and support my dreams, I'd appreciate if you would subscribe and who knows, maybe it'll inspire other people like my children to continue chasing their dreams no matter how old you get. All right, let's look into these stories. And the very first one is that Nintendo has updated the 3DS and the update breaks the easy exploits that you could do to soft mod your 3DS. Now the update they released was version 11.17.0-50. Now nobody really knows why Nintendo with a platform they don't support anymore, it's completely dead and Somehow they decided to randomly drop an update to remove an exploit, but you know what? They did it anyways. It will not affect you if you already have a soft modded 3DS, so feel free to update if you've already done it. You can download the update. It's not going to break your system. It does remove the banana three trick for modifying your 3DS, however, which was the most popular method of soft modding your 3DS. The update also contained minor updates to everything that touches the internet, so the eShop web browser, but really it's the update that you know, touched the system settings that matters the most. While this did make hacking a 3DS much more difficult to do. It's technically still not impossible. In Europe and Japan, if you have a new 3DS, you can still use a web browser based exploit and they're trying to get this patched right now to work on US versions as well. Now, again, this is only for new 3DS models, new 2DS model, etc. If you have an older model, it's actually much more difficult to modify your 3DS now. Uh, there is a particular exploit you can do with a specific DSi where title if you happen to have it downloaded, but if you don't have it downloaded, it's a bit more difficult to deal with it. And obviously, hackers over time are going to try to find new ways and new exploits since the one that Nintendo patched out is one that's been very popular and didn't really feel like they needed to do any more work, but it's quite interesting that Nintendo even updated the 3DS at all. What makes soft modding and hacking 3DS is, to me, something viable and worth thinking about is obviously Nintendo has dropped support for 3DS. You can't buy brand new games on the eShop anymore. Eventually, you won't be able to download the games that you purchased on the eShop. So with that support going away, it becomes more and more important that users that own these systems can modify them to still enjoy the games that they already purchased. So I think that this is really strange that Nintendo is still dropping updates. Now, you can obviously just not update, but some people have automatic updates turned on. I just think it's really strange that they even did this update at all, but Nintendo's going to Nintendo, and they just prove that no matter what, they're going to keep trying to thwart people who are trying to modify their platforms. Here's another interesting story coming out of Sony's camp. I don't understand what Sony is doing here, but... They presented a false graph, fake information about Nintendo's brand momentum when talking in their business segment meeting last night. This is all public information. They put it out there. Makes no sense. They brought up this chart, which shows brand momentum for PlayStation, Nintendo, and Xbox. And they're showcasing them as A, B, and C. So... You can't really tell. You either even color coordinated it to the respective companies. Now, these are based off of Sony's official internal numbers and not like some external firm or a guess, you know, from like you know, analysts out there. What they show is that the PlayStation 5 launch peaked their momentum, remember, brand momentum, while Nintendo stayed flat. Xbox is showing a couple of peaks as well, but mostly flat. 
Now, Xbox doesn't report numbers publicly, so it's really hard to touch upon their brand momentum, but Nintendo does. Keep in mind, this is brand momentum of Sony Interactive Entertainment to Nintendo and Xbox. You have to note that Sony Interactive Entertainment also deals with Sony Productions, which is their brand that manages adapting video games to movies and TV. So they are counting that in their brand recognition. Now, they're showcasing data from 2018 through the end of last year. So in regards for Nintendo, that would mean things like the mega success of the Mario movie would not be counted in this because that happened in 2023. Quite convenient. They cut off six months ago. Don't really understand why, because we have data from this year, but whatever. However, even industry veterans like Stephen Tatillo thinks this chart has to be an outright lie. It doesn't make any sense, as do many analysts. Why? How can PlayStation 5 launch be such a peak for brand recognition in 2020 for Sony? Yet in 2020, Nintendo Switch sold a record 28 million systems while having a single game. Animal Crossing New Horizons sell 30 million and not, not only not see a bump in brand recognition, but in fact, a literal minor decline makes no sense. To be clear, 28 million is more than Sony has ever sold on of any system in a single year. It is literally the all time record for a number of systems sold in a year. But Nintendo didn't gain any momentum from that. <laughs> but remember, the PS5 launch gave a massive boost, even though in 2020, Nintendo Switch outsold PS4 and PS5 combined. We, we know this to be true because we have the literal data. It doesn't make sense. Why is Nintendo nearly flatlined? All of their success doesn't get a bump, but only Sony's success gets a bump. It's it just, it literally doesn't make sense any sense uh moving beyond that uh animal crossing new horizons also obviously created massive brand recognition during the first year of the pandemic so uh, again they are really just finding ways to lie they are giving incorrect data on nintendo intentionally now nintendo has basically been flatlined since 2018 so pokemon scarlet and violet being the fastest selling launch of any nintendo game ever uh, last holiday system didn't provide a brand bump. The launch of theme parks with the announcement of other theme parks coming. The Mario movie trailers created no momentum brand-wise, striking deals with Lego and becoming the fastest selling new Lego sets in 30 years didn't drive any brand momentum. This is beyond game after game from Nintendo breaking sales records in recent years and especially from 2018 on. Heck, remember in 2018, Nintendo dropped Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. No momentum gain from that, huh? Nobody's really quite sure what the point of this graph was in adding in competition. They could have just focused on themselves. Of course, the idea of the chart is probably to make PlayStation's brand look like it truly matters and grabs all the momentum and is so much bigger than everybody else. But they do so with real data, and then they're presenting false narrative data from Nintendo, at least in regards to what's happening there. There are several points on this chart where Nintendo had more brand momentum than Sony, let alone being flatlined. And the weird thing is, all of Nintendo's sales and numbers are public. So this chart is so easy to disprove. Sony has entered the territory before of dismissing everyone and inflating their own egos. And it kind of seems like they're doing it again by creating a false narrative that doesn't really seem to serve any particular purpose. So I don't know what Sony's doing here and why this chart even exists. Uh, you know, Xbox doesn't have enough public data to even compare. And then when you're looking at Nintendo, they all of their stuff is public and you're basically acting like they have gained no momentum during the entire Switch era. Remember, Nintendo Switch is now the third best-selling platform to ever exist, the second best-selling home console to ever exist, and they gained no momentum at any point during this generation to possibly get ahead of PlayStation. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty sus, all right? I don't like using that term, but it's something... The, the logic just isn't adding up. Now, remember, we're not talking about gross revenue, Sony does make more gross revenue. We're just talking about brand momentum. Acting like Nintendo didn't gain any brand momentum this generation and didn't get ahead of Sony during part of this generation is very silly. Now, moving on to our last story, because I, I don't know how we could follow that up. 
Let's throw a little bit of a positive spin out there. So new DLC was announced for Mario plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope. It's called The Last Spark Hunter. Uh, it introduces a new character. They only dropped a teaser, so we don't actually know a lot about it, but this is uh, the second part of a three-part DLC. The last part of the DLC is supposed to bring in Rayman. This part looks like it might be a bit more of a story-based DLC, however. But again, they didn't give us a lot of details. They're just teasing it. It's probably going to release before the end of this year. And we'll get more details at Nintendo's next Direct event or third-party showcase. So it just seems like they want to set you up. Hey, we have new DLC coming. We'll have more details coming on it later, probably at whenever Nintendo does their next event. And we just want to remind you that this DLC is on its way. So I'm pretty stoked. I really enjoyed Sparks of Hope. I enjoyed the Tower of Doom DLC they've already released. Now they have this coming. Then they have the Rayman DLC. Really glad they're sticking through with their DLC plans, even though they talked about how sales were a bit disappointing. Now, Sparks of Hope actually did sell pretty good, but it doesn't seem to have matched the sales of Kingdom Battle. But time will tell on this front, right? Like, you know, Kingdom Battle hit those sales over a number of years. Sparks of Hope hasn't been out that long. Hasn't even been out a year. So let's just wait and see. But for right now, I'm really glad they're sticking by their DLC. And I hope the game performed well enough that we get more of this in the future. Because I would hate to see the Mario plus Rabbids series ending right here. Even though it would be ending on a high note, I just feel like there's so much more we could do with this in the future. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rumpel Jans from Nintendo Prime. And you know what, guys? Hopefully you tune in for our Sony Showcase live stream later today and then our Nintendo Prime podcast tonight. Catch you in the next video.